Well, let's get straight to the next management, CMS Infosystems. That's the one on our radar. We have with us Mr. Rajiv Kaul, who is the executive vice chairman, the whole time director and the CEO of the company. Hi, Rajiv. Uh, good morning and good to see you in after a while. Well, uh, you know, for the year, I think you'll have laid out a guidance of around 2,500 to around 2,700 crores. Uh, do you think you'll be able to hit the upper end of this range? Tell us that. And also tell us about the vertical splits, you know, cash management, as well as your MS uh, segment. How much will both of these grow? That was a very quick, direct question. I thought at least we'll talk a little bit about last year performance. Last but, year's uh, numbers, happy... Rajiv, we have. We want to know the way ahead now. <laughs> well, um, you know you know as well, uh, Nigel, uh, at the company, we sort of only give a revenue guidance. Our revenue guidance for FI25 was to grow to a 2500, 2700 pro range. And you're right, we have already uh, updated in our investor presentation. We are looking to hit the upper end of the guidance. We feel reasonably confident about achieving it. On your um, next question on the split of businesses, our um, you know our managed services and technology business has grown very rapidly. In fact, the CAGR growth for the last three years has been above 30%. Um, we uh, do expect that business split to be 60-40 between our cash logistics business and our managed services and technology business, which is what I think we almost achieved that number in FI24. And we feel uh, confident that FI25 will also be in that zip code. Okay. What does this mean that in terms of margins, uh, you know, because the managing service uh, business has been, no, it's high teens uh, in terms of margins, while a cash uh, logistics business, well, that gives you better margins. So on a blended basis, what does margins look like? Well, I think you have to think of margins from different angles. One is the percentage margin, which I think the street focuses overtly on. I think that what we really focus on growth in the margin. I think a growth in the margin, whether you think of the managed services technology business, I think that's grown at a CAGR of about 39% over the last uh, three years. Um, so the margins uh, quality there is improving. Uh, uh, I think what is again important to tell uh, investors is that our ROCE has been uh, doing, has been fairly strong. Our ROCE has expanded by 200 bips from an average of 25% to 27.4% um, last year. I think these are very solid return metrics despite investing almost close to 200 crores of capex um, for growth every year. So can you maintain the ROC at around this uh, 27% and also what's the capex you've lined up for this year? So, you know, given the growth opportunity for us right now in all our verticals, uh, we feel fairly confident about um, the growth outlook, which I've already talked to you about. We are looking at uh, investment, capex investment this year of roughly about 300 crores in that uh, in that area. Um, and uh, from an ROC perspective, I think we should look at ROC over trend lines. Um, each year may uh, may not be the right way. I think we have sort of gone from 25 to 27. I think that's the area where we hope to be in. All right. So um, what about market share? I mean, you, you had an aspirational target of 60% there. Uh, the year before that, you did about 46%. Where do you stand at right now? And by when do you reach that aspiration? Hi, Manglam. Um, again, you know, I, I enjoy this early morning interview. Very, very hard <laughs> break question. Um, but, um, you know, for us, um, if you think about our, I am, I'm guessing you're referring to our ADM business market share. Yes, in the cash that's correct. Um, so I think that business is, we are right now around up somewhere between 49 and 50% market share right now on that, um, on volume basis, and then revenue would be higher. Um, so, you know, we are making improvements and um, either we are defending market share and strong businesses or we are taking market share uh, in our, some of our newer verticals, like, um, you know, AIoT and all. I think we've done a tremendous job in scaling that business up in the last three years. And uh, what about the cassette swap? We keep asking you about that as well. Uh, direct questions here too. When does that come up and uh, what's the benefit? Yeah, no, I think the benefit is very important from what RBI wants to drive, right? Which is the quality of uh, currency, which is going to be dispensed across the ATM network in India. I think it's a very important initiative. Uh, these things take time. I think the first 30 cities of cassette swap rollout have been completed. Um, so roughly 15 to 20 percent of the network is right now uh, under the cassette swap mechanism for CMS. Um, now we will be working along with IBA and the banks to see the next set of 30, 40 cities, which might take a year, year and a half to roll this out. Um, so I think that there is a steady and decent progress. It's a fairly complex process change for the entire ecosystem, but a good progress. We're pretty happy with the quality of work happening there. So what is typically the delta of uh, ca cassette swap, you know, for uh, assets which have uh, cassette swap, say for every incremental percent of uh, cassette being swapped, what is the benefit that comes into CMS? 
I think you, you have to think from the benefit to the first the consumer, right? Uh, and, the, and the banking system. I don't think it's important about what CMS benefits. Um, it, Kethersop is a very important process to keep the sanctity of the notes which are being replenished and uh, which are available in the ecosystem to be of high quality um, and genuine. Number one. Number two, a cassette swap process can also help in making sure that the cash utilization ratio is more efficient. You don't need to keep loading more and more currency each time. Um, you know, you are able to run a process which overall banks should be able to uh, save the amount of money which will be sitting in an ATM at any given point of time. Uh, so I think those are the two important things. From a perspective of CMS, uh, for us, it's important. Was first, is right things for the country. Um, we were one of the very few countries in the world where you don't have the consent sort process. So I think it's important to do it from a quality and standards. Um, overall, I think it'll improve the ecosystem. It'll improve um, you know any reconciliation related issues, and overall uh, also improve the amount of currency which needs to be, um, which is sort of which is sitting in an ATM. I think that can be you can start bringing that down over the coming years. Okay, Rajiv, uh, you know, where you took strike and you smacked it out of the park was the AIoT segment. You know, I think it was contributing around 4 5% of your total mix. It scaled 100 crores uh, rather rapidly. How do you see that business shaping up? Any targets in the near term, FI25, FI26? And by when does it hit that 500 crore mark? You guys are tougher than my board. Um, <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, so, you know, yes, we have done, um, we're very happy it's done well. Um, we've uh, been lucky that it's scaled from zero to 100 crores in uh, roughly three years. Um, the way, you know, again, we don't give guidances by each BU, but we have talked about this. We feel the opportunity, again, please, you know, remember this word, I said the opportunity. The opportunity for us in the in the midterm, and let's take the next three years, is to grow this at a CAGR of 30, 40%. If we are able to do that, um, if we are able to execute and well and drive up the this business, then the 100 crore can become a 250 crore sort of a run rate. Um, for me, I think that's more important, right? I mean, crawl, walk, run. We would rather see this grow instead of, you know, saying big numbers. I would rather see how do we get to 200 crores in the next two years? How do we get to 250 crores in the next three years? I think that those are important yardsticks for us internally when we measure ourselves. Um, the revenue contribution, as you said, has already gone from a, 0% to 5% in a span of just three years. I hope to get the 5% uh, contribution to maybe 700% in the next three years. All right. Uh, so that, that explains your outlook for the next three years. You've also given us a, an aspirational target of 37, 3,800 crores on the drop line uh, in the next couple of years. So let's wrap this up, uh, 30, Rajiv. 34 by... to 3,800 crores. Like Manglam, I'll say 3,400, 3,800 crores. Okay, 3,400 to 3,800 crores, if you want to quibble over, uh, you know, the lower end of that guidance that you've given. But we, we uh, the street would like you to achieve the higher end of the guidance. Let's wrap it up with the revenue that you will have, uh, you know, the revenue mix at 3,800 crores. How much of that will be inorganic? How much of that will be, uh, you know, MS? How much of that will be cash management? How much of that will be AIoT? If you could give us a sense. Um, we actually haven't really dissected FI27 forecast. I think that's something which we will talk about when we do our next investor, uh, you know, summit analyst day. Um, I think right now, um, also we want to be careful because we are focusing on an organic growth. Um, we are, as I said already, we are working on incubating new lines of business. Um, mm -hmm. And let's see how that goes on. I think it'll be better. Uh, we'll be able to give a better sense once we know how that is going. So I would rather be careful and focus on FI25 for now. Okay, all right, Rajiv, we enjoy running into bowl and we appreciate you batting and taking uh, each ball as per, uh, you know, the quality of it. Thanks a lot for joining in and filling us Thanks. in with all those details.